All right, so let's talk about boundaries. First off, what, what are boundaries? And I'm going to share a definition of boundaries that I heard recently from a good friend and parenting coach of mine. She said that boundaries are something that belong to us. It's not about this arbitrary line drawn in the sand that, you know, someone else could cross or not. Our boundaries is how we communicate where that line is because that line can change from day to day. You know, sometimes my boundaries are right here and sometimes they're out here and that's okay. It depends on where I am, sort of my level of consciousness, if I'm feeling good, if I'm feeling down, um, maybe how much my kids have been pulling at me. <laughs> so my boundary, I really like to think about this, you know, not this arbitrary line that I draw on the sand and what happens to me, but how I respond. That's what really creates my boundary. When somebody crosses what feels good, what feels right for me, how do I respond? What did you guys hear in that? What comes up for you? around owning your own boundaries and thinking about them as your response rather than just uh, sort of this invisible line that that someone can cross or doesn't. Does it resonate? Do you have some like, yeah, but feelings? I I'd love to hear. All right. Mark said, grew up in Washington. Always afraid of a Canadian invasion so close to Vancouver. <laughs> okay, boundaries, international boundaries, good. They did that once in 1800 and killed one of our pigs. My goodness, poor pig. <laughs> Lisa says, watch out or we'll invade again. Ah, uh, all right. We're learning about pig wars today. Okay, okay. You know, I, I, I feel it's significant the um, the idea of of a war because sometimes it can feel like that, doesn't it? When our boundaries get crossed, it almost feels like a silent war. Like how how do I protect myself? How do I how do I make this space safe again? And so I invite you to ask yourself that, because this is look within. So when that boundary feels crossed, when something doesn't feel right to you, how do you make your space safe again? You can ask yourself, just breathe. Really, maybe ask your heart. When my boundary gets crossed, what do I need to create this safe space again? What do I need from myself? What do I need from others? In fact, let's, let's breathe, let's breathe in. Hmm. Deb says her reaction makes her aware that she needs boundaries. Hmm. Good night, Susan. Thanks for joining us. We hope you can pick up some subliminal healing for your boundaries. Oh, thanks for extending the peace there, Mark. All right, so let's uh, let's take a moment and go within. Oh, before that, let me give you a tip for boundaries. Get better sleep than I did last night. <laughs> that can make such a difference, doesn't it? Just noticing our boundaries and what feels right. When you were sleep deprived, it's like, oh man, it's just so easy. It's so easy to lose, lose myself in what feels good. Mm. 
All right. So Lisa says she feels like her boundaries are often crossed. Any suggestions? Yeah. The first thing that comes up for me is just that loving awareness. You know, oh, my boundaries are being crossed. My boundaries are being crossed. You can recognize who does it to you. But what I think is most important is to recognize where am I in this and what does it feel like right now? Okay, I'm here. This does not feel right. I know my boundary just got crossed. Now what? Now what? Now what? Now you have a choice. Now you have a choice. And I think first, I'll go back to what I teach a lot here. And it's just noticing the thoughts that come up in your mind. Noticing any thoughts of blame, any thoughts of they did it again, any thoughts of why does this keep happening? Just noticing those thoughts to really understand the thought processes that are keeping us stuck or perhaps keeping us from responding in the way that is truly aligned. And all you have to do is notice the thoughts. That's the brilliant thing about how our minds were created. You don't need to replace them with happy thoughts or, you know, have this whole, like, if A happens and B happens. That's one of my things that I've learned on my boundary journey is, you know, I'd recognize that someone would cross my boundaries and I'd be like, okay, well, the next time they do that, this is how I'm going to react. But the thing is, every time is different. Every time is different. It's going to show up differently. They're going to do it differently. So that can help. But generally, I find when I make that if this, then that scenario, it never happens exactly like that again. <laughs> and so, so by making that, it's like I spend a lot of energy. I spend a lot of time trying to plan like, okay, here's how I'm going to deal with this boundary. And I've learned over time that the best thing I can do is just notice that it's been crossed and say, hey, hey, my boundary's been crossed. Hey, that doesn't feel good. Hmm. And I'd love to hear from you guys, when you think about people crossing boundaries, I want you to think about, is it normally strangers that do it? Is it normally people close to you that do it? Let's get really clear on, on where we are. Where are our boundaries? Where do we feel like they normally get crossed? Because when we bring in this awareness and we understand ourselves a little bit deeper, we just begin to heal. We just begin to heal, like bringing awareness to our thoughts. We don't need to do the if, this, then, that. We just need to notice. And the more we notice, the deeper we see. And the deeper we see, the more it resolves itself. Because inside of us is the biggest, brightest, greatest healing wisdom that has ever been created. That's the light within us. And so the more we can see through the BS that we all feed ourselves, me included, everybody I know does this, everybody I've ever met does this, the more we can see through all of those layers of thought, all of those emotions, and practice more acceptance and more self-compassion, the more these things just heal on their own. It's really, really awesome. So Mark mentions verbal boundaries and physical, oh, sorry, physical boundaries and psychic boundaries. Yes, yes, absolutely. And 
and Ginger says normally it's people that she knows that cross her boundaries and Deb says family. She finds it easier to maintain boundaries with friends and new acquaintances, but family has years of history. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can relate to that also. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you who crosses my boundaries the most. It's my daughter. And she's the person that I love the most in the world. I'm crazy about her, but man, does she know how to cross my boundaries? Holy cow. It's like almost bringing tears to my eyes. <laughs> this conflict, this juxtaposition. You know, especially our kids. Man, did they know how to poke us where it hurts. What's coming up for me right now is this time that I came back from a retreat. And I was feeling so good. I was feeling fresh and renewed and like I'm ready to bring this into my family. And I get home and about two hours later, after being poked and yelled at and jumped on, I just felt like, Ugh. and the stress came back. And that sucked to see it. But what was beautiful about it is it became really clear to me what that stress was that I was able to let go of in the retreat. And once I saw that, I knew it was going to be able to change. And one of the things that in, in this process of reclaiming this, this renewal from the retreat, I talked to a friend of mine and I told her that, oh, my daughter, I just feel like I noticed that I'm just waiting for her to cross my boundaries. And she said, she looked at me and she goes, you're taking it personally. And that was the insight. That was all I needed to hear to go, oh, you're right. I'm taking it personally. She goes, kids are always going to cross boundaries. That's their job when they're little. They need to learn what's okay and what isn't. And they're going to keep crossing it whenever they're feeling uh, like stirred up or emotional inside. It's not personal. And I was like, oh my gosh. And guys, this took so much pressure off of me. It took so much pressure off of me. And maybe that'll help you too thinking that a lot of the people that cross our boundaries, it's not personal. It's not you. It's them. And when we can stop making it so personal, then we can really own our own boundaries. Then we can do what I mentioned before, where it's like, okay, my boundary is not this arbitrary line and you better not cross it. My boundary is what I do in response to feeling like my line is crossed. What I do when something happens that doesn't feel right. That's my boundary, is how I communicate that. Hmm. Jitali says, thoughts on how it hurts to set and respect new boundaries that have been put in place in friendships where there previously haven't been change as hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. That can be really hard to put in new boundaries with old friendships or with family. There are a lot of expectations. There are a lot of expectations. And it reminds me of a, of a quote that I saw, something on Instagram, I'm pretty sure, where this guy said something along the lines of his therapist said to him that the toxic people in our lives are going to respond to the version of you that they can control most. And that feels really icky if we get caught in that. But when I reflect on that, and I think of when I did put in boundaries for myself with my own parents, with my own children, with my husband, with friends, most of the time there was pushback at first. But once it was there, it gave me freedom, it gave me peace, and it transformed our relationship into something healthier and something deeper. 
And it's interesting because I find that the people that I'm most afraid to put these boundaries in with, you know, like, oh, will it be okay? Those are the ones that are actually going to grow with me. Where it's easy for me to put in boundaries and then the relationship ends. Well, I guess that's it. Like the relationship ends. And that's why it was easy because it was just, it was meant, it was meant to be a parting there. But where it's really hard to put in boundaries are for some reason with the people that will grow with you. For the people that when you put that boundary in place, when you say, this is my limit, I really don't like talking about that anymore. Can we find another thing to talk about? Can we say that in another way? I'm sorry, this isn't serving me, listening to these complaints, and I don't believe that it's serving you either. Hmm, yeah. Yeah, Lisa says she has to drop a couple and I see a pouty face. Mm -hmm, the closest ones. Yeah, this brings up a lot of sadness and a lot of grief. So let's sit, let's sit with that. Let's sit with that feeling of loss. Yeah, it's hard to be the recipient too. What about being the recipient? What about being the recipient? What comes up for you guys? What comes up about being the recipient for me is an opportunity to ask myself, is this what's truly best? And if in my heart I feel that it is, then it's a lot easier for me to go along with it. And I think in order for me to go along with it, I have to forgive myself for having not done it in the first place, for having done it or not done it. I think that's where we can really easily get tripped up is we say like, oh, this person wants to put in this boundary with me and it's really hard. What comes up for me is the hardest thing about that is forgiving ourselves for having done it for so long in a way that didn't feel right to either of us. And it can feel like it can feel shameful. And that's okay. That's okay. Because we act in a certain way because that's what we know. That's what we were taught. And there's nothing shameful about that. Let's see, we got a lot of comments coming through. Fear that boundary setting equals ending. Yeah, absolutely. There's a big fear that boundary setting equals ending. And sometimes there is. But sometimes when we're really afraid of boundary setting equaling ending, it's just the opposite that will happen the relationship actually gets to grow deeper with these new boundaries in place because the boundaries aren't to separate us. The boundaries are, are to protect what feels right for both sides. So it's really a gift. It's a gift that you give to yourself. It's a gift to give to the other person. Because even if we're not aware of it on a soul level, we know. We know when things don't feel right and we know when things don't feel right to another person. But if we've done it like that our whole lives, it can be hard to see it. Hmm. Rona says sometimes relief, only sometimes. Hmm. And Lisa Nanda said if other person can't respect needs or if the needs are too big. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I, what, what that reminds me of is recognizing that some people 
aren't able to give us what we need. Because that wasn't what they were given and they don't know how. And I think this can be particularly hard and I see it over and over. I've seen it in myself. I've seen it with clients, with our own parents. You know, that that inner child really clinging to, well, I needed this and I didn't get it. And I can tell you a personal story around that. I can tell you a personal story with my own mother, who is a wonderful woman and always has the best intentions in mind. And not all of her needs were, needs were met as a child because she's a human on earth in this day and age, <laughs> right? It's, it's not her fault that I remember going through this process of saying, of realizing, not even saying, realizing like there's a part of me that, that really wanted, it really wanted this emotional support as a mother when I became a mother. And my mother didn't know how to do that. And I know in hindsight, that wasn't given to her. It wasn't given to her mother and it wasn't given to her mother. I know this intuitively because I've, I've gone back and, and visited these energies. And then I went through a process of going, okay, so I'm not going to get that from her. I can't get all the emotional support that I want from my own mother. And then I went through this period of then being like, well, that's okay, but it wasn't okay because I still needed that support. And so what I did then was I asked, I prayed and I said, where can I get the support that I need? I admitted to myself that I still needed it, even though I wasn't going to get it from my own mother. I still needed it. And as soon as I asked, I realized that I had been getting it and I wasn't fully allowing myself to receive it. I was getting it from friends. All of a sudden I met a neighbor who became like a motherly figure to me. Um, I met another woman during COVID who was born in the exact same year as my mother who played a bit of a motherly role when I couldn't see my family for a while. And it just, it, it came in. So it was recognizing, okay, my need can't be filled with this person and it's still a need. So where can it be filled? Can it be filled by my higher self? Can it be filled by God? Can it be filled by the universe? The universe can definitely fill it. And then just being open to how that comes in. How that comes in. And that's a beautiful respect of boundaries, isn't it? Respecting what that person feels comfortable giving and respecting what feels right to you. I've never thought about it like that. But it really is. Oh, good night, Lisa Nanda. Sweet dreams. Hmm. Hard when a friend's boundaries change or their personality does. Mm hmm. It is. Change is hard, guys. I've been doing this work for a long time. I've worked with a lot of people around the globe. You know, I'm in the business of healing and transformation. And change, when it first comes up, it is hard. It is hard to see what we've been doing that no longer serves us. And the closer we get to changing it, the harder it feels. And you know what's cool about that is that the process goes in reverse too. And I was reminded by, by a sermon that someone gave where he was talking about the first time when he was a teenager and he tried smoking. And he remembers it was like, boom, 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 boom. His whole body knew this was not the right thing to do, but he chose to do it anyway. And the second time he did it, he still felt, oof, that agitation, oh, this isn't the right thing to do, but he chose to do it anyway. And over time, he stopped noticing that boom, 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 heart beating, you know, 
whole body being like, no, this isn't the right thing to do. And it just became a habit. And that happens with just about everything that happens in our lives when we form bad habits, if you will, or when we hold on to emotions or block an emotion or follow something that doesn't feel right. And a lot of these happen when we're so, so young, we're not even aware of them happening. So then when we go through a healing process, when we open up again to making that change, the closer we get to sort of that final straw, that final bit of, of healing where we actually step through and, and we're free of that addiction, we're free of that pattern, we're free of that you know emotional baggage or whatever it is, the closer we get to that doorstep, the scarier it gets. It's like we revisit the first time where it was boom, 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 boom. So scary. And it can happen not just in the moment, but over time, you know, as we think about it, as we progress, it's, it's like that inner warning sign. And that's how I always know that I'm approaching a breakthrough is because things feel really hard. My mind starts racing and telling me like, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. Nah, change your mind. Mm -mm, this isn't going to happen. Like, oh, no, no, no. Don't talk to that person. And it's the same with healing boundaries. When we go through that change, even though it's right for us, even though in our heart we know it's right to respect that other person, to respect ourselves, it can feel really hard because all of a sudden we're face to face with the first time that we agreed to go into that pattern. And it's like that full body warning. And oftentimes we're not even aware of what it is. We just feel bad. And this, this is one of my favorite spiritual teachers. His name is Jeffrey Allen. This is what he has always said is the number one reason why people don't grow, why they don't change. It's because they're afraid of those growth periods. Because when something comes back to the surface, it can feel really, really uncomfortable. And if we're not given the tools, if we don't have the support around us with friends or family who have faced it before with a healer or a coach or a therapist who can hold that non-judgmental space to allow us to move through it with more grace and ease, it can be too much. It can just feel like too much. And so we find another way to push it down and paint over the door, something shiny, and keep it over here. Hmm. Yeah. Hi, Lulu. Thanks for joining us. We're talking about boundaries and all the things that are coming up around them and about how boundaries are our reaction to what doesn't feel right as opposed to an arbitrary line out in front of us that people can cross or not cross. So we're owning our boundaries, we're owning our healing. And we're coming into the space together today. And it hurts and is overwhelming. Yes, Jatali, it is. It can absolutely feel that way. Thankfully, not all the time but it absolutely can. Good night, Sue. Sweet dreams. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I want to share one more thing. I want to share about a revelation that I had recently. You know, I've been working with energy for a long time. I've learned lots of boundary tricks. And there's some really good ones out there. I'll, I'll tell you one that, that we can do really quickly that you can take out into your day just as like a quick fix for when things are feeling overwhelming and it's surrounding yourself in mirrors, 
just imagining that you're in this little bubble. You've got mirrors all around you pointing outward so that every person you run into, this is great for like concerts and public transit and stuff like that. So that when people look at the mirrors, their reflection is just bounced off. And you can put love in the mirror too. I really like that. So whatever they see, it's just bounced back with love. That's a really nice way. Kind of like a, if things get too overwhelming, here's a tool that I can use to protect how I'm feeling. And I've used that many, many times, but I found it really annoying because I'd have to reset it all the time. So I knew it wasn't sustainable. I knew what was underneath wasn't being healed. Onto my revelation. What I saw around boundaries came in a session with my own holistic therapist. And what I saw myself doing was actually energetically sort of coming out through my head and going up to someone else's energy like this. Sort of energetically tapping into their space to see how they were feeling, where they were at that moment, and if it was safe to interact. And I know I've done this for decades. Once I saw it, I knew I had done it for decades, but I'd never seen myself doing it before. And I realized that me picking up on other people's energies, you know, feeling the weight of other people's emotions or even pain, physical pain in their body, it wasn't so much about my boundaries. It was about me jumping out and intentionally, subconsciously, but intentionally feeling in to make sure everything was okay. To make sure it was safe. And I can see myself, I can see myself as a four-year-old doing that. I can see how that originated. Making sure the environment is safe, making sure the people around me are okay, so I won't get any backlash, so I can keep getting the support and love that I need. And once I saw that, there wasn't much I had to do other than notice where it was still happening and give myself grace of, oh, oh, that's where I'm doing this. Oh, this is where it's happening again. And I continue to see as it comes up where that's happening in my life. I can continue to see, oh, I was feeling insecure about doing a presentation with someone last week. And in this feeling of insecurity, I, about sharing the stage with somebody, I jumped out and I decided to pick up on all of her emotional worries to control the situation. So like it, it, it's that it's those insecure thoughts in me then that make me sort of jump out and look and pick up on other people's energies, which I had always thought was a boundary thing, right? Because I was like, well, you know, this is my energy. This is other people's. Why do I keep feeling other people's energies? And it wasn't, none of the boundary tricks worked, at least not for more than an hour, maybe a day if I was lucky. What worked was seeing what I was actually doing and getting comfortable, getting acquainted with my own insecurities. And I continue to do that. I continue to see where I'm jumping out and getting in other people's business energetically. And not with bad intention, not with bad intention, to make sure they're okay, to make sure the safest space for me, the space is safe for me. But that doesn't mean that it serves me and it doesn't mean that it serves other people. Because what I know in my heart is that the best thing I can do for others is to do what feels right for me to respect my space, to respect my heart, to respect my feelings, no matter what. That's boundaries.
Hmm. Nuno says it's so tiring. Ah, oh, yeah, it can feel that way sometimes. <laughs> I agree. Noni said, well said. Thank you. Ah, oh, I've been a jumper. Yeah. So Noni can relate about jumping. Mm-hmm. And it's innocent, right? It's not it's not something we need to beat ourselves up over. It's something we did out of protection and it's still trying to protect us. And yeah, it can feel annoying when it's still happening subconsciously and we realize it later. And the more we can realize that, the more we can see that, the more grace we can give ourselves. The more we can say, oh, I'm doing that thing again and it does not feel good. Oh, I'm annoyed that I'm doing that thing again and it does not feel good. And Jitali said, isn't it exhausting to address all that too? I do so much self-work that the idea of facing more stuff to work on is overwhelming and scary. Oh, Jitali, I just got goosebumps. I can relate to what you're saying so much. I really can. And it doesn't have to be that hard. There's nothing you need to control. All you need to do is watch. You don't need to stop it. You don't need to change it. All this self-work, I've been doing a lot of self-work for a long time. And finally, 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 my prayers were answered. My literal prayers were answered. <laughs> and I learned that, I learned and I trusted, like I retrusted that the system is divine. The system within me, Mother Nature, and that it's built to take care of itself. And the more that I can just notice, simply notice my boundaries and notice the emotions coming up around them, notice what I'm doing, notice how I'm feeling, and just watch. And watch any other judgments and any other feelings that come up in a response to how I'm thinking or feeling. If I just watch them, eventually they go away. That doesn't mean I can always watch them. Sometimes I get distracted because it's too uncomfortable. But if I can, if I just choose to watch to the best of my ability over and over again, things change on their own. The knots of patterning and of negative thinking, they just slowly start to unravel. And that's not to say that those thoughts will never come back again, those emotions or those patterns. But I know they won't come back with as much control. And I know when they do, the bounce back time is going to be so much less. Because I know how to watch them now. And I know that I'm okay. I know that everything I need is inside of me. And I know that that's the same for you. Hmm, we'll try. Yeah, and you know what? My tip for you is don't try too hard. <laughs> you know, it, I really find that the harder we try, the longer it takes, the more effort we have to put in. So the more we can go, oh, shit, I'm trying really hard again, and laugh at ourselves the more lightness we bring to the situation and the more we return to that beautiful, compassionate, neutral, ever-loving space inside of us. Hmm. Amazing. Thank you guys so much for writing in today, for all of the love that you've been sharing. I appreciate it so much. My name is Charlotte Tamison. You can reach out to me anytime. I'm the only Charlotte Tamison out there. Follow me on Insight Timer. Send me a message. Work with me. I would love to go deeper with you because it's just, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful, this non-work work. work. <laughs>